I'm Dave Carger. Welcome to TCM and this week's edition of Musical Matinee. Today's feature is a well-regarded musical starring Fred Astaire, but without his longtime dance partner, Ginger Rogers. Astaire and Rogers parted ways at the end of the 1930s, and both of them found success independently. Our film today is one of the very best that Fred Astaire went on to make, inspired by a 1931 musical review he appeared in with his sister Adele. From MGM in 1953, directed by Vincent Minnelli, it's The Bandwagon. Astaire plays Tony Hunter, a once popular movie musical star who's been absent from the screen for three years and has begun to lose his audience. Looking to revitalize his career, Tony decides to return to his roots in New York, starring in a stage musical written by his friends and headed by a flamboyant director who brings his wild ideas to the production. Meanwhile, Tony and his leading lady, played by Sid Charisse, do not get along, making rehearsals for the play an absolute nightmare. Not only is The Bandwagon a brilliant musical, it's also a hilarious satire. In 1946, Fred Astaire announced his retirement from motion pictures. He intended for his performance of Puttin' on the Ritz in the Paramount musical Blue Skies to be his farewell. But retirement didn't last long for Fred Astaire. He returned to the screen in 1948 in the MGM musical Easter Parade, filling in for Gene Kelly, who had broken his ankle. Easter Parade was a hit, and MGM offered Astaire a lucrative contract, which had him rethinking that retirement. The bandwagon turned out to be one of his proudest achievements at MGM, and it was loved by critics and audiences, but it lost money due to the film's staggering production costs. Today, it's considered a masterpiece, one of the finest musicals that MGM ever produced. From 1953, also with Nanette Fabre, Oscar Levant, and Jack Buchanan, here is The Bandwagon. The Bandwagon was nominated for three Academy Awards, including one for Adolf Deutsch's musical score. Betty Comden and Adolph Green also received a nod for their original screenplay, basing the characters of Lily and Lester Martin on themselves, even though they weren't romantically involved in real life. The choreography was developed by Michael Kidd, one of the most well-respected choreographers on Broadway. This film was particularly important for Kidd, who went on to choreograph some of the biggest musicals of the 1950s, including 1954's Seven Brides for Seven Brothers and Guys and Dolls in 1955. As for Fred Astaire, this was his first time appearing on the big screen with Sid Charisse, whom he affectionately called Beautiful Dynamite. They teamed up once more on the 1957 musical Silk Stockings, a remake of Ernst Lubitsch's non-musical 1939 comedy Ninotchka. Up next, we're switching gears for a historical epic from 1960, starring Kirk Douglas in one of his most iconic roles. 